In this video, we're going to be testing out what I consider the ultimate small form factor arc powered mini workstation slash gaming PC. What I've got here is the all new Minus Forum MS02. And a few days ago on the channel, we took a look at this kind of a first look. I installed an RTX 5060 to get some gaming out of the way, and it performed amazingly. We've got 24 cores, 24 threads here with the CPU they opted to use. We've got the Ultra model here, but I was wanting something that could handle large language models and gaming a bit better, something with a little more VRAM. So what I'm going to be doing here is installing my favorite new low-profile dual-slot GPU on the market, the Intel Arc Pro B50. It's going to fit in here great, doesn't require any extra power, and in this video, I've got quite a bit to cover. Of course, we will take a look at some gaming. I'm going to run some benchmarks, test out some image generation and large language models using LM Studio. But before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. The main thing I pick up over here are Windows 11 Pro Keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's going to bring the price down to $23.31. They're going to email you that key, and then you can activate Windows. Speaking of that, let's head over to a new PC that I recently built. As you can see, we're running Windows 11. And from settings, we're going to go to activation settings. It's going to tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed. So we're just going to paste it right in here. Choose next. It's going to activate Windows for us. And we're ready to go. If you're in need of cheap Windows keys, I'll leave a link in the description. And remember, you can use code ETA for 25% off. Since I got my hands on the MS02, I've been messing around with it quite a bit, testing different combinations, and I love the form factor. Also love the look. It's got a very industrial look. You can set it up vertically. You can set it up horizontally. I mean, it'll basically go anywhere given the form factor here. It also supports up to 256 gigabytes of RAM. In my last video, we installed this, the low profile RTX 5060, triple fan designed. It does require one 8 pin PCIe power connector, but luckily the MS02 does have that ready to go. In this one, I wanted to install the new Intel Arc Pro B50. It's not considered a gaming GPU by any means. It's more of a workstation GPU. It's got a blower style cooler system and 16 gigs of RAM. But I do love what Intel has done here with the GPU itself. And getting in here is pretty simple. There's just two screws on the back. We'll just slide the cover right off. Down at the bottom, we've got our 300 watt power supply ready to go. This also came out of the box with a dual 25 gig NIC card. So uh, if you want some super fast speeds there, no problem. It's got a ducting system here over the CPU cooler. It's a dual fan design that just kind of draws air right over the cooler they have. It's custom built specifically for this PC. And down here, we've got our 8 pin PCIe connector for cards that support it plus a full-size PCIe X16 5.0 slot. This supports four sticks of RAM. It uses SODIMM, and around back you can see I've got two that are unpopulated, but in total we can do 256 gigs of RAM in this unit, and it will support ECC as long as you have the Ultra model. Uh, RAM is pretty expensive, so with this one I've got 64 gigs installed from the factory. So far, this has been a really solid machine, and obviously it supports a low-profile dual-slot card like this Intel Arc Pro B50. Slides right down in there. And if you take a look up here, this is actually the top of the unit if we're going to set it up vertically. So the blower-style cooler system is going to draw cool air through the vent on the shell, so I'm not worried about this thing overheating. And when it comes to the CPU, this is actually using the Intel Core Ultra 285HX. 24 cores, 24 threads, Power limit 1 up to 90 watts, power limit 2 up to 110 with the GPU installed, but without a GPU, you can do a power limit of 110 across the board. It also has USB 4 version 2, so it can do up to 80 gigs if you wanted to use another external GPU with this. Something a bit larger that wouldn't fit inside of here would actually work out pretty good externally. So far, really impressed with this little setup. And like I mentioned, I did test this with the RTX 5060. Of course, for gaming, that's going to work out a little better than what we've got here. But as you can see, we've got the Intel Core Ultra 9 285HX, 24 cores, 24 threads here, 64 gigs of memory, and RAM prices are insane right now. This can do up to 256 gigs of RAM in this mini PC, but I don't know how many people are going to be doing that. It uses SODIMM, and we've got four slots there. We could access the NPU with that 285HX, but instead of using that for basically anything, we're going to be using the Intel Arc Pro B50. 16 gigs of VRAM, 
This is gonna be perfect for this little machine. As you saw, doesn't require any extra power. And for AI workloads and things like that, I mean, I think it's actually a really good card. And even if you wanna get down to gaming, not a problem to do so. And one thing I've been using quite a bit with these Intel cards is Intel's AI Playground. Of course, this does look like kind of a beginner setup. And when it comes down to it, yeah, it is, but you can use this as a power user also. Basically, when you install this, you do have the option to install and set up Comfy UI. And trying to install Comfy UI from, let's say, Comfy UI or even manual is a bit hard with these Intel chips. Of course, starting up Comfy UI, your device is not supported. You can continue anyway and do a manual setup. But with this, it allows you basically one click, you've got Comfy UI set up. You can use your own workflow. You could check out their models, but it works out pretty well on the B50. Another thing we've got here is just built-in image generation. So we can create from here. We can enhance images from answer, open Vino. And uh, I'll go ahead and create a few images here. So basically this is gonna be using that B50 and we could throw a prompt in here or we could just let it generate whatever it's gonna generate. I think it'll do five images and you can see it's gonna hit up that GPU. It doesn't take much with this. The model it's using isn't too large. I believe it's like 12 gigs. And once it gets into it, I mean, it's pretty quick. Actually, I guess it only does four, but they do come out really nicely here. And if you just wanted to use AI Playground to enhance images, you can upscale from here or, you know, answer questions as kind of a desktop assistant you could. This was definitely built to showcase Intel Arc, just how easy it is to use with OpenVINO and other models. But if you wanted to, from there, it just makes it so easy to install Comfy UI. And since I shut the whole uh, app down, it has to reconnect. But Comfy UI is possible with this B50. Checking out large language models uh, with LM Studio. I've downloaded a model. It's just OpenAI's GPT OSS 20 billion parameter. We'll load it into memory. And right now we're working with uh, like 8.6 in use. This is not a huge model by any means. With something like this, getting up to 256 gigs of RAM. I mean, you can go pretty crazy with it. 120 billion. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what we could do with 256, but with this 20 billion, did use a bit of extra RAM, up to 20 gigs in use now because that loaded the model into memory. But we can ask this anything. So uh, let's say how to make a pizza. And this is all local. So it's doing it all on this setup with the model that I downloaded. It's utilizing the GPU instead of the MPU or the CPU. Actually, it looks like it's kind of split. We're using a little bit of that CPU, but you can see it is using the GPU here. And almost done here. We'll let this finish up, see how long it took, how many tokens it used. And since this was going, you can see we also used GPU memory down here. We've got 16 gigs with a B50. It used 11.6 of dedicated GPU memory here to do this. Just the simple question with this model that I'm using. 33.42 tokens a second, uh, 1,179 tokens in total, and 0 0.34 seconds from the first token. So it's actually pretty quick on the B50, and that's one of my favorite new cards here, given that you don't need any extra power, and it's a dual slot low profile card. So checking out AI on this little machine here is great. I mean, we've got enough power for most enthusiasts when it comes to like large language models and things like that. But with a setup like this, one thing I always like to do is game on it. And if you wanted to use this as an everyday desktop, there's nothing you really need to worry about. You wanna do some video editing, some photo editing uh, using Photoshop, DaVinci Resolve, Premiere. This little setup's got more than enough power on the CPU and GPU side to do it. But what I like to do is game. And I know the B50 Pro isn't made for gaming. In fact, if we go over here, we've got the Intel Pro graphics software. Resizable bar is enabled from the BIOS. Uh, profiles, we can set this up. It'll scan our directories, find our games if we want it to. From performance with the B50, there's no tuning that we can do. Intel actually kind of locked this down a bit. And on other cards, let's say like an ARC A380, we only get six gigs of RAM over there. You can overclock it a bit from this software, but this is basically locked down for us. So there's really not any extra power that we can get out of the B50. But all by itself, not a bad little setup. I went ahead and ran some benchmarks, and the first one we have here is Geekbench 6. This is looking great. I mean, single core coming in with a 2,957 
multi-core, 17,992. Moving over to Cinebench R24, for single core, we scored a 128 here. And if you take a look down the list, it's beating out the Apple M1 Max, the Ultra, I mean, all the way down. And multi-core is way ahead. We're up to 1,903. This is awesome. And remember, this is a mobile chip, albeit it is the HX variant of that 285. But uh, given what we've got here, CPU performance is really great. Checking out some GPU performance with the Intel Arc Pro B50. We got a total score of 1,632 and our FPS is 16.32. Not as much as something like an RTX 5060, but it's still well above, you know, an integrated graphics setup. And the final one I ran here was Time Spy with a total score of 8,478. It's not going to win any benchmark awards, but both of these are looking pretty decent for the uh, GPU we're working with here. Now, I want to move over to some real-world gaming and show you what this thing can do, because it's actually really impressive. First up, we've got Cyberpunk 2077. We're at 1440p Ultra with XESS set to balance, and you can see, I mean, we're right there on the edge. Dropping this down to high settings still looks great, and you'll net around 84 FPS on average. But with these new Intel art cards, we do have something that I personally really like. And in my opinion, it's one of the best implementations of it so far, XESS Frame Jam. With games that support it, I've had really good luck with the B50, and something like Cyberpunk 2077 does work amazingly. 1440p Ultra XESS Frame Jam on, getting a little over 100 FPS on average with it. I've also enabled XESS Low Latency for uh, input latency, and to tell you the truth, I mean, with this enabled on the B50, I don't notice any kind of input latency with it set up like this, and we're getting almost double what we were without it. Of course, I had to show off Forza Horizon 5. We're at 1440p Ultra with no XESS. We don't need it with this game. And in fact, if we take it up to 4K Ultra, it does dip a little under 60 every once in a while. So 4K high settings with no XESS, seeing averages of around 78 FPS. And finally, Spider-Man 2. This is one of those that does put a hurtin' on the B50 at these higher resolutions. We're at 1440p, dropped it down to high from very high, and we've got XESS set to quality. Looks good, but even with it set up like this, I mean, we're seeing averages in the mid-70s. There were a couple spots where I saw it get real close to around 59 FPS. I kind of chalk it up to the game itself. The game has been a bit hit or miss on different hardware since its release, but it's fully playable like this. So overall, yeah, I've been having a great time with this machine. I love the form factor, love the look, and the fact that we can install GPUs like that Arc Pro B50 is a big plus. The RTX 5060 is probably the best you're going to get right now for a gaming setup with a low-profile dual-slot card without spending, you know, $3,000 on an A-series. But I could use this as my everyday desktop for everything with that B50 installed. Photo editing, video editing, gaming. I can run large language models on it if I want to. We've got quite a bit of RAM with this small form factor unit. But that's going to wrap up for this one. I'll have at least one more video coming up. One thing I want to do is try a dual GPU setup. And I'm not sure if it's going to work, but uh, I will test that out in the next few days. So if that's something you're interested in seeing, it'd be really cool if you could hit that like button and think about subscribing so you know when I post the next one. But that's going to wrap up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.